Beginning in the 1970s, the U.S. began equipping its local police departments with an increasing amount of military equipment and urban warfare techniques. A popular primetime television crime drama, SWAT, standing for Special Weapons and Tactics, familiarized the broader populace with this trend. Today, this tendency toward militarization has developed to the extent that school children of all ages are now regularly terrorized, all in the name of safety and vigilance. The strange and chilling epidemic of active shooter preparedness on this edition of the Memory Hole Blog Report. For MHP Report, I'm James Tracy. The fear of mass shootings has been instilled in the public mind to a large degree through the media's endless quest to dramatize and thereby profit from violence and tragic misfortune. Following the still curious and lengthy military-like assault on adolescent children attending the Columbine High School in 1999, Active shooter drills have been introduced into public schools across the nation, purportedly in an effort to prepare school teachers, staff, and youths of all ages to properly respond to the presence of armed intruders. In certain ways reminiscent of the Cold War duck and cover drills that sought to prep students for a Soviet nuclear attack, active shooter drills have become an expected requirement of attending public educational institutions today. The seeming frequency of mass shootings and their sensationalized depiction throughout mass media intensify the perceived need for such drills in the name of safety and preparedness. On many grade and high school campuses, the events are now a weekly occurrence, with students having to undergo the traumatizing experience dozens of times each school year. Authorities emphasize the rationale that The more realistic or lifelike the drills, the better they may prepare school personnel and students for that one calamitous event. Thus, many shooter drills now proceed without actually informing children whether the exercise is real or not. So when the principal announces yet another code red event over the school's intercom, children are left to cope for several long minutes each time having no idea if they will soon be appearing on the evening news as injured or deceased victims. Alongside the perceived need to fortify the nation's schools, gun control organizations with unlimited resources and notable spokespeople churn out powerful advertising and public relations messages, drawing on their own highly publicized narratives all of which assail the notion of true community by reinforcing the false perception that a crazed gunman lurks around every corner. News media are complicit in the hysteria, providing the messages of these very gun control organizations with what is effectively free promotion through their own often erroneous reports. Policemen are now even shooting blank rounds during active shooter drills with students present. The noise of live gunfire is believed to make the drills appear more lifelike. In at least one recent instance, school teachers were shot by police with rubber pellets, execution style, that left welts and drew blood. In many cases, students are recruited by school and law enforcement authorities as crisis actors, wielding make-believe weapons as mock assailants or donning cosmetic injuries and playing dead, all in a purported effort to prepare their peers and themselves for the real thing. In contrast to the exaggerated notion that school mass shootings are an almost everyday occurrence, Recent research indicates that students attending U.S. public schools, in fact, have a very slim chance they will ever be involved in an actual active shooter incident. In the end, millions of children from preschoolers to adolescents who depend on taxpayer-funded public schooling for their education have, as a prerequisite to receiving that education, to be put in a routinely stressful, if not a fully terrifying situation 
again, all in an effort to prepare for an event that they have a very slim chance of being involved in. We don't expect airlines or cruise ships to drill passengers on how to respond in the rare event one of their vessels will be hijacked. Yet students are, unfortunately, a vulnerable, captive population, subject to such social experimentation. In the process, they are cultivated to submit to authority and accept policing as ordinary, expected, and even welcomed. In the end, from the multi-million dollar gun control nonprofits and the dazzling make work of law enforcement agencies to the wall-to-wall media coverage afforded those events themselves, mass shootings, like their Cold War military-industrial complex predecessors, have become the ideal public-private partnership of the day. Indeed, another way to traumatize the public while generating revenue and creating an entire self-sustaining industry in the process. For Memory Hole Blog Report, this is James Tracy.